For over a millennia now, we have had men like these tell us that Christmas is good. It's so easy to be enamored with it as a child. We are definitely indoctrinated to believe it is good because it looks so innocent. And who does not like getting presents? Christmas comes every year with a big bow on it. We know we've been nice through the year. But is there something else going on here? We have been led to believe this is also when Jesus was born and that the Magi came to give gifts to him. But most folks know that it has pagan origins and what do you do when your child comes home from school and asks? determining whether Christmas is good or not, we must first ascertain whether it comes from God or from Satan. We know it if it comes from God, it is pure, meaning it's righteous and holy to him. If it is from the devil, then it is of the same nature as Satan, and that would work against God or his commandments, and that would be sin, would it not? After all, where did sin first start but in heaven? when Satan rebelled against God because of his pride and was cast out of heaven along with a third of the angels by Michael and his angels. We also know that from the book of Revelation in the twelfth chapter that Satan deceives the whole world. Wouldn't it follow then that those that act in accordance with him could be described as devious? These followers also could be described as deceptive as well, could they not? How do they do this specifically? They lie, they cheat, or they manipulate whatever to get whatever their master wants. And Satan's job is to walk about the world and seek whom he may devour, according to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. Now we have been led to believe from childhood that Christmas is holy and good, but is it? We have been told we are doing right when we do it in that it will help us to get to heaven. But is that so? As long as it is holy to God, then it has to be true. But what does Satan want? He wants the world to worship him. And if he deceives the whole world, is he using Christmas to do it? If he is, he must use some means to deceive everyone into thinking that he is God. He would have to manipulate the Bible itself to do this. Jesus calls Satan the prince of the world in John the 14th chapter. Paul describes him as the spirit that works in the children of disobedience in Ephesians the second chapter. Or children of the wicked one is how Jesus also said he is, uh, speaking of the tares in Matthew the 13th chapter. There are two races to God, Jews and Gentiles, or sheep and goats. It has nothing to do with skin color. Not one iota. In Romans, the second chapter, Paul states a Jew is not one who is circumcised outwardly in the flesh now, but circumcision is of the heart and the spirit, whose praise is of God and not of themselves. So a spiritual Gentile is one who will not praise God nor worship the God of the Bible. He may even think he does. He may call his God Jesus, but we'll see if that's true or not shortly. A couple of more things about a devious person or a follower of Satan will do is that he will downplay the importance of something in order to divert someone's attention away from its significance. They think they're being like a puppeteer in that they let others think they're in charge while subtly manipulating them. 
What most people that call themselves Christians may not know about is what we find in the Catholic Encyclopedia. In the article on Christmas, it tells us the word for Christmas in late Old English is Christus Masse, the Mass of Christ, first found in 1038, and Christus Messe in 1131. We're going to skip down a little. The term Yule is of disputed origin. It is unconnected with any word meaning wheel. If you'll notice, this article is over four pages long, and right off the bat, it says that Yule is of a disputed origin. Then goes on into saying it is unconnected with any word meaning wheel. Yet Yule is part of the pagan or heathen wheel of the year, which the Bible says not to have anything to do with, as we'll see later. So would you say that the writer of the article is being devious and downplaying and even outright denying the truth of the origin of Xmas or Christmas or Christmas? Do we not have the Yuletide carols being sung by the fire? Or back even when I was a kid, we went house to house singing carols with the local church when I grew up probably too dangerous to do that now. The point is Christmas or Yule is where the heathen worshiped the stars. They thought some god or goddess was turning the stars. This all comes from the different positions of the Big Dipper in each season. We just went over recently in a study on Samhain or Halloween, which is in this position here. Now you have the season of Yule in this position here. Put it all together and you get the swastika, or as we read earlier, the wheel of the year. All these days of the year were holy to the pagans, or as the scripture states, the heathens worshiped this way. These were holy to them, but they had nothing to do with worshiping the God of the Bible and everything to do with worshiping false pagan gods. This all started in Babylon, where the earliest cuneiform sign for their god was a star. Would you say that this is holy according to the Bible? Let's find out. In Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, Moses is speaking to Israel and instructing them what not to do. And let's read that starting in verse 15. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude. On the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. In Babylon, they worshipped their male deities in the form of the sun. This was obviously a wicked counterfeit system the Bible speaks of set up by the Nimrod in Genesis the 11th chapter when he built the Tower of Babel in the land of Shinar. Babel became known as Babylon. Both of these names mean confusion and this shows where Nimrod had a God complex much like his father Satan who is the father of lies. The system also had female deities like Ishtar which turned into tree goddesses or tree worship. So sun and tree worship is called Baal and grove worship in the Old Testament. In Genesis the 11th chapter we are told God went down to see the Tower of Babel and then we read in verse 8. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. This is how the sun and tree worship system was dispersed and is worldwide now. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 4, talking about what not to do again. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, 
even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Why do you think that you put a star on top of the tree? This is out and out idolatry or worshiping false gods. This is what Satan wants. This is what Satan was made for, and that is to deceive. Remember how we went over in the Catholic Encyclopedia where the term Yule was of disputed origin for X-Mass or Christ-Mass. Let's look at a more reliable source of information. In the McClinic and Strong Cyclopedia, their article on Yule reads, Yule, the old name for Christmas, still in provincial popular use in England. It points to heathen times and the annual festival held by the northern nations at the winter solstice as part of their system of sun worship. You may be saying right now, okay, but that is just opinion, or you've just got one encyclopedia versus another. So let's take a look at the Hastings Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics. In their article on Christmas customs, we read about Yule also. The northern type of Christmas customs is found in the Teutonic Yule Feast, well known from Icelandic sagas as well as from Greek and Latin chronicles. The article goes on about the northern type for another page, but we're going to take a look at the southern type spoken of in Rome now, where the beast system still resides. The Christmas feast has inherited these customs chiefly from two sources, from Roman and from Teutonic paganism. We can therefore discern a southern and a northern stratum underlying the Christmas observances. The Saturnalia in Rome provided the model for most of the merry customs of the Christmas time. This old Roman feast was celebrated on the 17th through the 24th of December. This merry time they described was actually a week-long orgy of debauchery said to be holy in the eyes of their gods. The Roman god Mithra was said to be a mediator between God and man, and his birthday was celebrated on December the 25th. Coincidence? I think not. In the Roman Catholic Church, you always have a tree near the altar. What does the scripture say about that? Let's turn to Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, and read verse 21. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Is this not a violation of what we just read? Then that would make it sin, would it not? Then this would be, by definition, evil and the Roman Catholic Church would be teaching you to do it along with every other so-called church that does it now. These priests of Satan are evil incarnate and are leading you straight to hell if you can't or won't see this. You might say, well, that's just in the Pentateuch. Okay, let's take a look at a familiar phrase on this subject and read Jeremiah 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. There it is again. The signs of heaven that the heathen are dismayed by. The word dismayed in the Hebrew is hathath. This is the theological word book of the Old Testament written by Harris, Archer, and Walkie. These guys are brilliant scholars in the Hebrew, and they tell us this about the Hebrew word dismayed. Both call and nephil forms of the verb are stative. Both may refer either to being broken or to derived ideas such as fearing or being demoralized. 
they can be slightly distinguished in that the secondary significance of the call form refers to the broader idea of demoralization or dismay in general, while the niffle form has clearly assumed the meaning of to fear. For the call form, literal breaking is indicated in describing the cracked condition of land under drought. This is talking about the land of Israel, as we are spiritual Israel now. I just went over in the last study about the famine of the word and Christmas being a large portion of why that is. Now let's step back for a moment and review what we've gone over and why this study is so important. The Bible, which is the holy word of God, is written for instruction and righteousness and to, Lord willing, show us how to get to heaven. But you have to remember Satan's job which is to devour whomever he can by whatever means of deception he can use. You don't think he can fool anyone looking like this, do you? Hardly. The Roman Catholic Church would have you to believe all this evidence about the Yule, Saturnalia, sun and tree worship is of disputed origin. We have just read three excellent and authoritative extra-biblical sources that tell us in no uncertain terms that the Bible is right and what the Roman Catholic Church is teaching or calling Christian is actually heathen or pagan practices which are wickedness in origin and nature. This they do by deliberately subverting the truth of the Bible and inserting this satanic doctrine of Christmas or as it is really in X mass in the form of that tree. This is undoubtedly Satan's masterpiece of cruelty and deception. Let's go back to Jeremiah 10 and read verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Before we had all these electric lights on the trees, we had silver and gold to adorn them, along with the balls, which represented fruit for fertility. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to thee doth it appertain. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. But they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Let's look at this word stock for a moment. In the Hebrew, this is the word eights, and it means tree. For those that want to argue with this passage, let's go to Isaiah, the 40th chapter, to evaluate whether God loves everyone, like all these churches say along with the second witness of the tree when we start reading in verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Still think God loves everyone? Sure looks like man is inconsequential or even irrelevant, according to that verse, does it not? To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto him? Compare this verse to what the Roman Catholic Church wants you to put next to their altars. The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Those trees that they put next to their altars have to have a stand now instead of nails to keep them upright. And what of Isaiah calling the graven image a tree that will not rot? What is that? An evergreen tree. What are all the types of Christmas trees or Xmas trees? 
evergreen trees. It is actually sickening to see all these stupid Christmas or Christmas commercials that suck in all those people who supposedly have the holiday spirit. Let me say this and I'm going to be very clear about this. If you have the holiday spirit, then you do not have the Holy Spirit because they are diametrically opposed to each other and you may call yourself a Christian, but indeed you are not. I saw R.C. Sproul say before he passed that some folks wanted to call a graven image a work of art or some nonsense like that. He totally disregarded scripture and his response absolutely had nothing to do with the truth whatsoever. Let's get a third witness to this passage when we go to Deuteronomy, the 27th chapter this time, and read verse 15. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsman, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. I have to ask this question to those who are still watching and are either skeptical or scoffing at what you have plainly seen. How long will it be before you believe the word of the Lord? And quit going along with all that Satan has obviously used to deceive the world with. Or are you just going to keep worshiping Satan in that puny Jesus form? Is that it? You just want to keep worshiping Satan or that wimpy and effeminate Jesus, huh? Because that is what you are doing. How do you expect to get to heaven that way? You're not going if that's what you believe according to the scriptures. Besides all that, the sacrament of the mass is about the doctrine of works. It's very easy to go there, but we're going to look at another verse about graven images next in Exodus, the 20th chapter. This is obviously where the Ten Commandments were given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Wouldn't you say this is fairly easy to understand? No graven image, which as we read, is the Christmas tree in the Roman Catholic Church. No likeness to anything in heaven or in the earth. So that star you put on the top of that tree and the tree itself, both are not to be near you if you believe the Bible. Here's the kicker. The Roman Catholic Church doesn't give you that commandment in their list of the commandments. What they use is an excuse. Chapter and verse are mentioned as medieval inventions. What they want you to believe is that the Latin version groups verses 4, 5, and 6 together so they can hide the graven image part. The explanation given is that there are really 16 verses. They will split verse 17 into two parts, calling them separate commandments which they are not. This is another of Satan's disciples teachings that they want you to believe is biblical. They call the Protestant Ten Commandments the shorthand version and theirs is the correct version but what they fail to say is that the Tenth Commandment is not to covet all those things listed which should be listed as we have it. Not to list the Ninth Commandment to deal with coveting the wife or calling it lust and the Tenth Commandment covering everything else, calling it greed. Another display of the sons of Satan doing the will of their father, which is lying. I want to make sure that you see the subtlety of their deceit here. The absolute hateful and cruel nature of evil is put on full display with this type of deceit. What is funny is that when you show them this, then they turn around and do their little cross thing, which is another abomination. Then they tell you, you need to read verse 16, which says, 
Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. This is evidently how blind, deaf, and dumb these guys are, or that they are evil incarnate, as I said before. If you cannot tell that the tree and all that goes with it is idolatry, then you truly are blind spiritually, or your eyes have not been opened by the Holy Spirit yet, hopefully. Hence the need for this channel and this topic of Bible study. If you want to keep believing that way, then I like what the Lord told Obadiah in, to Israel, in that the pride of their heart had deceived them. What is pride but the very nature of the devil and sin? So to answer the question whether Christmas is evil, unequivocally, yes, it is. Christmas is evil, and Satan uses it to deceive the world into thinking they are worshiping the Jesus of the Bible when they are actually worshiping him. Now, the usual response I get is, well, we just don't do it that way. Well, how do you do the customs of the heathen? God never changes is what Malachi 3 says, and this is the way the Lord sees it as we have verified in his word. Now, Jesus said if we deny him, he will deny us before his father, and we are his friends if we do whatsoever he has commanded us. Satan has done and is definitely doing his job very well if you believe Christmas is good after seeing all this. If this does not bother you at all, get all you can out of this world, because this is not of the Father anyway. Make it worth your while to go to your next destination. Make sure selling your soul has been worth this little vapor of time you have spent here.